Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Kyra and today is my March 2020 month in review. I first of all want to thank you for all of you who have sent well wishes, hugs, prayers, and anything of the like to myself and my family and specifically my husband. I had posted on Instagram that my husband is very, very sick and in the hospital right now and I'm not able to be with him due to hospital campuses being closed to visitors. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you to all of you who are sending love our way. It is more than appreciated and I will continue to keep you updated on Brian's recovery over on Instagram. But with all of that said, let's go ahead and talk about my March. First, I want to talk about some top products. Actually, let's get the bad news over with first this month. The bad news, and I don't even have this anymore, I've already decluttered it, is the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Skin Milk. I had mine in the shade Light. This was terrible for me. Terrible. <laughs> okay. I tried so hard with this product. I used a velvet sponge. I used a beauty blender. I used several different foundation brushes and I also used my phalanges right here. None of those tools were capable of making the product look like a part of my skin. Today I'm using the Physicians Formula The Healthy Foundation. This is a good medium coverage foundation and it looks like my skin when it's on. I mean, it does look makeup-y if you get up close, but all makeup looks makeup-y, does it not? Unless you're not wearing a base. So, but there was no tool or technique that was capable of making this CoverGirl product look like a part of my skin. It sat on top of my skin. It emphasized every pore, line, texture, everything. It just never like in any way, shape or form absorbed into my skin. And I just really cannot recommend that product. I do know some people with drier skin have been enjoying this product. And maybe that is the reason why it didn't work for me. I am combo, sometimes oily in the summer, and it just didn't work for me. And so, you know, you do what you do. I was not willing to work through that foundation. My tops for the month. These are the products that I have been loving all month long, new, old, or in between. And this is the budget product of the, the month. month. This is the Wet n Wild Coal Eyeliner in the shade Sima Brown now. This is a recommendation from Mandy Lee here on YouTube and I will link her channel for you. This pencil is like 99 cents <laughs> and I will tell you, where, where are ya? This beats out this. This is the Marc Jacobs Highliner. It's in the shade Earthquake. Beautiful product but I like this better. This is 99 cents. This was $25. I'm choking. <laughs> I can't. Um, this was just perfect. This is the perfect mixture between creamy but tenacious. It is long lasting. It is soft enough that it glides on the eyelid or the waterline, wherever you choose to apply it, but then it stays there. And that's the problem I have with the Marc Jacobs one. The Marc Jacobs one is beautiful and creamy. And I think, I don't know, harder to work with as a result of that. It's harder to work with because it is so gel-like and creamy that, I mean, if I wiped, even wiped my eye with the Marc Jacobs one, it would be everywhere. That's, that, that's all there is to it. So I just love this and it's the perfect, beautiful, like somewhere between milk and dark chocolate brown and 99 cents. I can sharpen it all I want because it is budget friendly. I mean, this is one where I can say this is an affordable product because 
it's 99 cents. <laughs> Can't get over it. Next, let's talk about this little puppy. I believe I bought this in February. Anywho, this is the Kosas Color and Light Creme in the shade Eighth Muse. So it looks like this. I have been curious about this product for a while. Definitely a Jessica Braun made me buy it sort of product. It is a cream product. Did I even show it to you? It has this cream blush right here and a cream highlight right here and I love this no wonder Jessica loves this first of all it's beautiful you can see that highlight is there the blush does not have any shimmer to it and then of course the highlight does this is so good I kind of want the other one they have which is like an apricot shade blush with more of a peachy highlighter but I love this it's a beautiful tone for my skin it applies beautifully it works well with your fingers it works well with a sponge mine's dirty so I'm not going to show it to you I also like any kind of like duo fiber brush for applying it to my cheeks probably my favorite way to apply it is with a sponge I feel like it does set down for the most part I mean I wouldn't say that it's like a stick formula like this one from ColourPop here this really does completely set down once you apply it to the skin and leave it there for a while. But this one, it mostly sets down. What I end up doing is just taking my powder brush, whichever powder brush I've used for the day, with no additional powder, whatever I use to powder my face, and I just press lightly over my cheeks and I feel confident that it's going to stay in place. This is the Marc Jacobs Omega Bronze Coconut Perfect tan in the shade 104 tantastic i love this little clasp it's actually a button that you push and it's up well, here we go it's a button that you push and it separates the top from the bottom absolutely gorgeous mirror and then here is the product i don't know if you'd be able to tell but i've given this heck this month this was a part of my march shop my stash and first of all it smells like vacation like not butter bronzer vacation but like you're going to an expensive resort versus your local beach does that make sense <laughs> i think the butter bronzer smells like tanning lotion this smells like vacation it does have a coconut scent to it but it has a lot more richness it ha it's you know it's kind of like the difference between a cheap perfume and a beautiful eau de parfum so this is what this looks like the thing I love about this is that it's absolutely buildable for me so I think I'm gonna be able to wear it anytime I love this it is the perfect tone for me that's probably the main thing I like it's a great beautiful smooth easy to blend formula but the tone of this and it's kind of, I mean, I think that's pretty true to color, what I'm seeing in the viewfinder here. It's warm without being yellow or orange. Uh, it might even be more closer to neutral. And I, that is what I really like about this as well, because it'd be warm enough for me to use it during the summer months when I'm looking for more warmth, like what I have on my face today. It's not this. Um but it's also neutral enough that I'm able to wear it like now even though now I have a wee bit of color and it's hard to tell when I'm already bronzed but uh during the colder months when I am at my palest this is still really easy and foolproof to use so I do love it it's definitely spendy I really <laughs> I don't always intend to recommend bougie things to you guys I really don't um, but I have been enjoying trying some high, more high-end and definitely luxury products and so it is what it is I suppose let's talk about my beauty budget before we get into what I purchased this month I'm gonna read to you a comment I received from a subscriber and I am so very blessed that I received this comment. This comment was left on my February month in review. 
um, so a month ago and I'm not gonna leave the person's name or anything like that you know who you are and I thank you so so much for clearing things up for me in my mind so just to sort of set up <laughs> the scene for you last month in February I broke my budget to pieces and I was feeling a little bit of self-loathing about it feeling very disappointed in myself um, just because I had not only broken my budget but broken my budget in the second month of you know this beauty budget plan this person says self-forgiveness is important we can't move forward if we keep looking back I totally agree that said, consistency of logic is important with any sort of rules we make for ourselves. If this low buy is because you want to decrease the amount of stuff, then a limit on the number of products rather than a monetary budget makes sense. But if that's the case, whether products come in via purchasing or points doesn't matter. Both stuff, both count as stuff in. I cannot read today. If this is about saving money, then a monthly budget totally makes sense, as does not counting point purchases. But in that case, how much you declutter should not affect how much you allow yourself to buy since decluttering or keeping a palette doesn't affect your budget. It's your collection, your spending, etc. So you always have a right to change your mind. But I know for me, rules are a lot easier to stick to when they're consistent with each other. And I think that was what was missing from my beauty budget plan, so to speak. I had put a cap of six eyeshadow palettes on myself at the beginning of the year, as well as a $50 a month beauty budget. But I never even thought in my own mind or clarified in my, you know, sort of introductory YouTube about my beauty budget, whether the purpose was to save money or have less stuff. And so I really started to think about this and think about the reasoning behind what I, why I put a cap on my palettes and why I put a $50 a month budget on myself. So I was at, at the beginning of the year feeling very overwhelmed and very, um, sort of put upon by the amount of stuff that I had in my collection. However, now that I've had my collection series and declutter series go up on my channel, which I can link for you in case you missed it, um, I feel so much better about the amount of stuff that I have. That being said, I do want to reduce the amount of money that I spend on beauty and makeup products this year. Um, I lost my ever loving mind last year after I ended my no buy and bought everything that I ever wanted on my wish list at both Ulta and Sephora and so on and plus you know good deals at the holidays and things so I, I really think the reality is I want to spend less this year I also think by spending less this year, by that $50 a month budget, I'm going to have less stuff coming in by default. I don't receive PR. I rarely receive makeup as a gift other than my husband, <laughs> uh, which we'll get to in a moment. And you know, one might say, well, it's both of your money. Well, yes it is, but it's a gift if he picks it out for me. Um, or you know makes the purchase for me or what have you so I think what it all boils down to is I'm not going to limit the amount of eyeshadow palettes this year what I am going to continue with as much as humanly possible is my $50 a month beauty budget that's really what I want to spend or less or none um, and like I said by default I think I'll have less stuff coming in I also think too, uh, Hannah Louise Poston talked about in 2019, was sort of like a concept of fewer, nicer things. You know, for example, this Marc Jacobs bronzer would be an entire month's budget if I purchased it right now or next month or what have you. And so that would be the only thing, one thing coming into my collection that month. And I have to tell you, that would be a dramatic decrease from what I've experienced in the past. So I'm really liking that concept. I'm very thankful 
for that comment that caused me to think critically about what the purpose of my beauty budget and you know palette sealing and all of that was so I am going to revoke the palette sealing that's a huge part of my platform here on YouTube um, you know for me what I see myself as I'm an artist you know a painter who happens to also love painting her face and you know and kind of bringing that type of content to you how painting correlates with makeup and things like that and so when I buy new eyeshadow palettes it's like buying a new palette of paints to me different paints to play with so um, that's it I'm going to take away my palette ceiling but I am going to work really hard on sticking to my $50 a month budget and go from there <laughs> we're all on a journey here and I'm definitely on a journey to purchasing less and spending less so let's go ahead and talk about what I purchased with my $50 budget this month and when I am talking about the $50 if I have rewards points that I can use toward the purchase or rewards on my credit card from Sephora I count that as a discount I do not count that as spending part of my budget so the first thing that I purchased right off the bat, I think I mentioned in February that I was thinking I would purchase this. It is the Viseart Paris Edit Palette. I do not have full thoughts or a full review on this product yet on my channel. I've mentioned before, let me know if there's a certain kind of video you'd like to see with this. But I do love this palette so far. These colors are absolutely stunning and very much my jam. So I did purchase that and I did get this for $25. I talked about this in the get ready with me. Uh, it was a something old, something new get ready with me. And um, this was the something new. <laughs> I did talk about in that video that... Um, I got a discount on this because I had a $15 reward at Sephora from using my Sephora card. So that made the palette $25, which was half of my budget. Using the other half of my budget, as well as a promo code at Glossier, I did purchase the Stretch Concealer in the shade G10. It looks like this. I am loving this. I like to apply this either with my ring finger or with this little well it's not really a concealer brush what are you called flawless airbrush recommended from Jessica Braun for concealer and I do like it for this type of potted concealer to just dip in there and apply it that way so you never know it might be the concealer and then the other thing I picked up was a cloud paint these are so pretty I ended up getting the shade puff because I do own the Flower Beauty Blush Balm in Pinched, which is very similar to Dusk, I believe, um, it, from Glossier. This is the color. This is such a light pale pink, but it's really pretty. Let me see if I can put a little more on there. Don't be stingy, Kyra. My daughter wants me to put a little bit of this in a container for her because I put it on her one day and it was so pretty it's just like the cutest little pinking of the cheeks I don't even know how to describe it but I do really love this I will say I was a little surprised maybe I have big hands or something but whenever I would see these on people's channels I was thought they were a little bit bigger but I mean I'm not complaining it still will take me an eon to use this up if I can even do that before it dries up but hmm I interesting okay so the other things that I received in the month of February the first one was a free diamond gift with you know like a $25 purchase or something like that I always need either more skincare or hair care so when there's rewards that I really want or promo codes that I want at either Ulta or Sephora that's when I tend to make those purchases so the gift that I picked the only one I was really interested in was this Kylie um, Kylighter this is in the shade ice me out I don't see this shade in the regular range but this is like a really pretty like um, I see vanilla shade and it's actually really pretty on the skin 
I was surprised. This is not a brand that I've actually been tempted by or interested in personally, the Kylie products. I do hear good things though. Um, actually, after trying this, I wouldn't mind trying a blush if the opportunity and the right discount presented itself, but I really do like this highlighter. And I kind of like it because my name's Kyra Highlighter. So hmm. once upon a time, there was a boy and a girl 21 and 22 and 17 later 17 years later my husband and I have been married 17 years so that was weird anywho <laughs> anywho our anniversary was this month and at the same time they opened a Sephora in my city which we did not previously have not even one in a JCPenney and so I would have to travel to a different city in order to go to a Sephora, which I think I've only done twice since living here in Colorado for seven years. So anywho, it was very exciting. And actually my hubby surprised me the week that the Sephora opened. He took me there and he said, we are going to shop for your anniversary gift. So he picked one thing, which I will tell you I find really comical and the other two things were things that I picked out that were on my wish list. So the thing that he picked out, <laughs> thinking in terms of he's a male, was a boob blush from Charlotte Tilbury. Immediately he was attracted to these. He's such a dude. These are the Cheek to Chic Swish and Glow Blusher and this is in the shade Pillow Talk. And I love this. This is not the blush I'm wearing today, although I am wearing a Charlotte Tilbury blush. But I really love this. You have sort of a shiny, shimmery shenanigans in the middle and then a very pigmented blush around the outside. So you can mix them together or you can apply them separately. And I am a sucker for products like that. I love this. This is really beautiful. I love the packaging. I love, I mean, it's a very soft, finely milled, silky formula. Um, you know, I can't say it's a favorite or anything yet, but it's going to be a favorite, I'm sure. <laughs> and then the other two things that I picked were the last two Charlotte Tilbury things on my wish list currently. And that was the Pillow Talk eyeliner. Y'all know I've been talking about this. I love burgundy anything. And this is like a brownie burgundy or a burgundy brown. <laughs> it's like brick, but I don't know. There's a chocolatiness to it. And this is what I have on my eyes today. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I just used it a little bit on the upper lid and lower lash line to define. And then the lipstick that I'm wearing today. So here's the story. The NYX Butter Lipstick in the shade Ripe Berry has always been my husband's favorite lipstick on me. Um, pretty bold and kind of red and what have you. Unfortunately, I realized, I mean, I've had this lipstick for years. It probably wasn't even sanitary anymore. But one day I went to use that lipstick when we were having a date night and it was snapped off in the middle of the bullet. And I tried <laughs> to get it to go back together. But like I said, ultimately it really wasn't probably sanitary to have anymore. And so I had been looking to replace that lipstick and I think this one that was already on my wish list at Sephora is actually a really nice substitute, not a dupe, not a dupe for the color but or formula, but similar enough and my husband loves it on me and it is the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Revolution in the shade Bond Girl. This is one that was a recommendation from Emily Noel. Um, and I have to agree with everything that she says about it. It's sort of a bricky red with a touch of rose and a beautiful matte formula. I love her matte revolution formula, but you guys, this is like literally my perfect red 
but if not my perfect lipstick. I love this lipstick. I feel like, and you can disagree <laughs> if you want to, I feel like this looks gorgeous on me with practically any eye look, any, you know, any look overall. I just love this. It makes my lips look full. It makes them look just a little bit darker, like bitten, um, because I do have a pretty, you know, pretty strong lip tone, color, whatever you want to call it. So I'm so happy with this. I did pretty much a full face of Charlotte Tilbury today, excepting my brows, foundation, powder, and concealer. But the face products are all Charlotte Tilbury, the eyeballs are Charlotte Tilbury, and the lip is. So that is all I have for you this month. And by all I have for you, I've been filming for almost 35 minutes. So hopefully the editing process goes really well. In terms of things that I'm interested in purchasing in April, there are two. It's one of the new Persona Super Blushes. You know I love my Persona eyeshadows. And when she came out with a blush, speaking to a huge blush enthusiast, <laughs> I knew I was going to purchase one and I'm looking at Carmel, which is the Movi one. <laughs> and then the other thing I'm really interested in getting is just the Pillow Talk quad from Charlotte Tilbury. I just think it would be really nice to have like a go-to quad. Absolutely no guesswork because there's pretty much only one look you're going to get out of it. And that's what I'm interested in for April. Let me know down below. Did you have some tops? Did you have some bottoms? How are you doing in your project pans? What was your favorite thing that you purchased this month? Did you purchase anything this month? Put it all down in the comments because I love chatting with you guys down there. It really feels like we are interacting even more so than when I'm on camera when we're chatting in the comments and I just love it to pieces. I hope you are all staying safe and well out there and I'm praying for you and yours and I hope all of your makeup days are absolutely beautiful makeup days even if you're not wearing any right now which some people aren't and that's okay and I'll see you in my next video soon